Hi there. As you know, I'm a great believer in games. Games as a way of introducing、uh, new cultures, new scripts, new symbols, and also games as a way of、um, giving people an opportunity to、um, explore and think about、um, unfamiliar cultures in fun and engaging ways, especially with children. And today I'm going to tell you about a game in development that I call Adinkra Go, and it is based on the Adinkra symbols from Ghana. These symbols, which were originally、um, printed on ceremonial garments, each have、uh, their own uh, proverbial uh, quality. And、uh, part of the aim of this game then. Is to introduce people to these symbols、um, and the whole notion of uh, these uh, these graphic elements as being a new and、uh, different to us way of thinking about writing. This one here is called Bese Saka. It's、um, a stylized cluster of four cola nuts. And as such, it stands in、um, Akan culture for、um, prosperity or abundance or plenty or power. And in Adinkra Go, this is the heart of the village. And so the first move that each player makes is to place their base saka somewhere on the board. So I'm going to put it right. There, and I have cunningly painted them so you can see whose is whose, and the opponent may decide to place their base saka, let's say, over here, and that is going to be the heart of the village, and the aim of the game is to corral as many cattle as possible in the village. So the simplest version of the game consists actually of just the base saka and cattle and herders. So these are the、um, the testing elements. These these are poker chips. So the cattle are these white chips, and the herders are the blue and red. And the aim of the game is to have a line of cattle, and then to have a herder at each end. So here, the player,、uh, the the blue player. Um, has here's the base saka. Here is the developing kraal or village, and here are two herders, and at each end of a string of four cattle. So this player has already won four points, but it's not really that straightforward. For example, if you decide, and you're now this player here. That you're going to do a line of cattle, and you're going to do one of your herders at one end. There's nothing to stop the other player coming and putting a herder at that end, and all of a sudden, those cattle have not been herded. They're up for grabs. As in the game Go,、um, you have to put a lot of thought into where are you going to place your cattle, where are you going to place your herders. And the the cattle that are adjacent to the base saka are are safe. Not only that, but they're worth double points. So this actually would be two, four, six points, and then one extra seven. And you only need ten points to win the game. So this is the kind of the most、um, Asian version, the, the the one that's most like Go. You're, there are relatively few other elements of the game, apart from the placing of the cattle.、Um, you cannot place a herder adjacent 
to um, the other team's, uh, the other player's base soccer, that would be like kind of going into their village and, and, and so saying to your herder, stand there. But as the game moves further and further away, then the cattle become more and more um, open and um, the placing of the herders, and in a sense, the herding or even the stealing of the cattle um, becomes the skill. So that is the, the most, uh, the simplest and most basic version. But there is a more complicated version. In fact, there are several more complicated versions. So I want to introduce you now to the next of our Adinkra symbols, which is this one here. And um, I may not be pronouncing it properly, but it is here, one here. And it means literally that which cannot be burned. And I'm taking it um, a little poetically and saying that which cannot be destroyed. So this is your warrior, your guardian. And when you place this into the game, then the opponent cannot place any herders anywhere near there because this character is protecting the cows and the village. So might go over here, for example, or you might be more aggressive and place it closer to the other um, village. This game really goes back and forwards a lot in terms of whether you're trying to develop your own village or whether you're trying to prevent your opponent from developing a village. And there are two more characters, or possibly three, um, that um, I'm working into the game. So this one here is Meridane, and it's actually an hourglass. And um, it stands for the, the phrase time changes or times change or things change. And in my version of the game, this is the trickster. And so um, as the game develops, you can place it somewhere and it essentially steals some of the opponent's cattle. Um, and, and obviously you can only play it once, you can't move it once you've played it. So the timing on the placing of this is very important. This is one of my favorite Adinkra symbols, which I've carved several times. This is Bean Ka B, and it's a stylized image of two fish biting each other's tails. And um, in, in a traditional um, Adinkra culture, this is a, a symbol which means, hey, we're all in this together, don't fight each other. So it's a symbol of, of uh, cooperation and, and justice. And I've decided to, to use it slightly differently in the more literal sense with two fishes. And so um, in, when this is in play, when you place it on the board, it creates a water hole. Hence fishes, water, right? And that means that nobody can place anything in an adjacent square. So one of the ways in which you could limit your opponent developing their village is by going boom and playing, placing a water hole. You can't do it where there's adjacent characters, cattle herders already. Um, otherwise that would be like, you know, creating a dam and drowning people. But you can do this and all of a sudden that's a no-go area. And there is one more character that I can't show you because I haven't received it yet, um, but I'm thinking of including, and it's a crocodile. And the crocodile really represents the most um, aggressive and possibly Western version of the game because the crocodile starts um, somewhere on the board, it gets tossed on the board. And even before people create, decide where they're going to start their villages, the crocodile is out there. So you're going to give the crocodile a birth, you know, a lot of room. Because, as I say, the aim is to um, have eight, sorry, have to have 10 cattle that you have herded. When one of the villages is up to eight, the crocodile 
wakes up and starts waddling toward that village and will eat anything, herder or cattle, in its path. Um, and so therefore you may want to use your guardian or your warrior as a means of protecting the village from the crocodile. Um, the crocodile is, we're still working on the crocodile. It's such a, a dramatic element. Um, we want to make sure we, we get it right. I, my um, my co-creator, Javan Ellis, is very keen on the crocodile. He, in fact, had this idea that he wanted the crocodile to be able to race around the board, eating anything in its way. Um, I'm a, a little more zen than that, so we're, we're still debating on the actual role of the crocodile. So this is what it looks like to have um, an endangered alphabet game in development. Um, in some respects, it looks really um, basic, shall we say. Um, in some respects, you can see the beginnings of the game coming together. Um, and um, I'm sincerely hoping that at some point, uh, maybe we'll raise a Kickstarter campaign to do this, uh, we'll be able to have a proper cloth. Um, it'd be wonderful if we could actually get it from Ghana. Um, and uh, there's probably going to be um, a sort of a basic cheap version of the game which uses symbols that are something like this, but it would be nice to have a more deluxe version of the game that has those in, in metal and that, that it really feels like a, um, a collector's item. 